Welcome. My name is Dominique Genot. I work for Oracle Server Technologies. This is the fifth demonstration of seven demos about in-memory colon store new feature introduced in Oracle Database 12102. This one illustrates how queries on in-memory objects and columns data populated within the IAM column store execute. We will also show how fast the queries ex execute against the IAM column store compared to the buffer cache. There will be two sessions started. We are connected in session one. There are two tables fully populated in the IAM column store, line order and date dim. The first query is a simple one, retrieving the maximum value of the order total price. All values for this column are stored into several IMCUs in memory column units. The optimizer has to scan the single low order total price column only while the row store format of the buffer cache has to scan all the columns in each of the rows until it reaches the order total price column. The query also benefits from the excellent compression ratio. The elapsed time is very short. The explained plan shows a table access in memory full operation. Notice the addition of the keyword in memory into the table access full operation. The keyword in memory indicates that this operation is eligible to have some or all of the data returned from that step in the plan coming from the IAM column store. If a table is partially converted to a columnar format due to ongoing population operation or due to a lack of space in the IAM column store, queries are able to use that partial in-memory version and go to disk for the rest rather than waiting for the entire table to be converted. Now, in session two, execute the same query against the buffer cache, bypassing the IAM column store. To bypass the IAM column store, set the in-memory query instance parameter or session parameter to disable. You notice that the elapsed time is much longer than the time spent to execute the same query with the IAM column store. The explain plan shows a traditional table access full operation. Back to session one. A second example shows a query projecting three columns of the line order table and selecting rows on a selective value of low order key column. The optimizer is fully aware of the IAM column store and the objects that reside within it. When it selects a plan for this query, it evaluates all the possible access paths. For example, full table scan, index range scan, index lookup followed by table accessed by row ID, and so on. The optimizer will then pick the plan with the lowest cost. The cost of a full table scan in memory is a lot lower than the cost of a full table scan in disk, which means that an in memory table scan will be selected more often. In this case, there is no index on the column. The LO order key column in the WHERE predicate is compared to the minimum and maximum range of values stored in each IMCU in memory column unit of the column. And if the value does not fall in the specified range, the IMCU is completely skipped. Therefore, IMCU1 is pruned out based on minimum and maximum values, and only IMCU2 containing the order key value of 357 is scanned. Here again, the response is instantaneous. The predicate information in the plan table output shows in-memory access to retrieve the order key value of 357. Let's verify that min-max pruning occurred by looking at four of the IM column store session statistics. In this example, there are 454 IMCUs eligible for min-max pruning, out of which 400 and 
51 did not contain any rows matching the value of 357 and therefore were never scanned. The statistics also corroborates the IMSCANCU's predicates optimized. Then only three IMCUs contained the value of the order key. For your information, the min max values of each column in all IMCUs are visible in the Vidola IM call CU view. Reconnect to reset session statistics. There are two ways to find out if a query performed against the IM column store and not against the buffer cache. View the in memory session statistics or the query plan. The session level statistics report how the SQL was executed. Session logical reads IM is the number of blocks scanned in an IMCU. All other statistics show that columns were accessed from the IM column store and that all blocks were already populated from disk into the IAM column store when the query executed. Back to session two, execute the same query. The performance is worse. The plan shows a traditional table accessful. There is no index on the table. All entire rows had to be scanned to find the rows containing the value. Of course, all IAM statistics show zero because the query fetched the data from the buffer cache. Back to session one, reconnect to reset session statistics. The IM column store has no problem executing a query with a join on several tables because it is able to take advantage of Bloom filter join. The use of a Bloom filter is visible in the execution plan. The Bloom filter will appear in two places in the plan, at creation time and when it is applied. In the example, when the tables are joined via a hash join, the date dim table is scanned first. The rows that satisfy the where clause predicate for that table are used to create a hash table. During the hash table creation, the Bloom filter is also created based on the date key join color. The Bloom filter is then sent as an additional predicate to the line order table scan. The table is scanned to find the rows that satisfy both the where clause predicates for that table. The resulting rows have their join column low order date hashed and it is compared to the date key values in the Bloom filter. If a match is found in the Bloom filter, that row is sent to the hash join. If no match is found, then the row is disregarded. There were eight IMCUs eligible for min max pruning, out of which four did not contain any rows matching the value of date key, were never scanned and therefore pruned out then only four IMCUs contained the value of date key. Still in session one, reconnect to reset session statistics, we re-execute the same query without the creation and use of Bloom filter. For joints that cannot use Bloom filters, performance is still very good. The plan shows that no Bloom filter is used, the IM statistics show that 197 IMCUs were eligible for min-max pruning, out of which four of them did not contain any rows matching the value of the hash join. This means that four of them were never scanned. Then 193 IMCUs contained the values of the dates. Still in session one, reconnect to reset session statistics. The query selects a row by its row ID. How to know that the operation retrieved the row from an IMCU and not from the buffer cache or vice versa. Check first the query plan. It does not display any table in memory access. Now display the 
table fetch by row ID statistic value, the value shows how many rows are retrieved from the buffer cache, the IAM statistics all show a value of zero, which means that the lookup bypassed the IAM column store. Still in session one, we'll see how the optimizer behaves when a query executes on both an in-memory table and on a no in-memory table. We create a non-in-memory table, verify that the table is no in-memory, and we execute the query on both the in-memory and the no in-memory tables. The optimizer chooses to work from both the buffer cache and the IAM column store in different portions of the plan. This is the end of the demonstration and thanks for watching.